Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about calcium homeostasis. And the way we're going to describe calcium homeostasis is through hormonal control and hormonal regulation. So let me give you the three hormones that regulate calcium balance. Should mention this, I think most of you guys know homeostasis refers to the regulatory balance of the body. So our three hormones for calcium balance are going to be calcitonin, I'm going to abbreviate it PTH, which is parathyroid hormone, okay, and then our very last one, which is a true hormone, is going to be calcitriol. Now, why do I mention this as being a hormone? Because we usually call this, you know, just kind of lay people call it vitamin D. So vitamin D really is a hormone. Yes, we call it a fat soluble vitamin, but again, it really is a hormone. And we're going to see how that affects calcium homeostasis. So the first thing that we want to know is where do we get these three hormones? Calcitonin comes from the thyroid. Okay, it is produced in the thyroid gland. We have another video if you want more information on hormones, watch our endocrine video where we go through all the basic glands and uh, hormones that they produce. And we also talk about the function of the hormone and classification of it. Uh, so we have some more info on that. Calcitonin is made in the thyroid from C cells, okay, or parafollicular cells. PTH, you can probably guess, is going to come from the parathyroid gland, hence the name parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid gland is behind, posterior to the thyroid gland. These little glands, usually four of them, attach to the back of the thyroid, okay? Two typically for each lobe of the thyroid. It is a separate gland though. The only hormone that the parathyroid gland makes is PTH. You know, the thyroid gland does make some other hormones that regulate metabolic rate. We're not going to talk about those today. Now, this final one is kind of unique because your body does produce vitamin D, right? It produces calcitriol, but how do we get it? A little bit different. We need something uh, in order to produce calcitriol. What do we need to start the whole process? <clears throat> we need the sun. So. It is UV light from the sun has to hit the skin and penetrate the skin. Okay, so if we go outside, I'm not wearing clothing that's going to really let me get UV light right now because I'm not, I'm, I don't have enough exposed skin. But if I was out there in a t-shirt and shorts and had some direct sunlight, assuming I don't have sunscreen because sunscreen blocks UV light, so when I don't have sunscreen, then I can absorb the UV light, you know, given I spend some time out there. I can absorb the UV light, and that's going to start the process. So when I uh, go out in the sun for a little bit and absorb that UV light, we're going to make something, I'll just put it right here, called vitamin D3. So that's what we're going to really get as the UV soaks into the skin and penetrates the skin. And obviously, many of you that take vitamin D supplements, you take D3 form, okay? But that's not vitamin D yet. We're going to then convert that D3 into liver, into calcidiol, okay? And then we're gonna do one more step in the kidneys where we're gonna convert it again now into calcitriol. And again, this is our vitamin D. Now the question then is, and we might as well talk about it now, what does vitamin D do for us? Vitamin D, once we have produced it, okay, it's going to go one more place, it's going to have its action in the small intestine, okay, where what is it gonna do? 
it's going to allow for the absorption of, of course, calcium. So it allows our bodies to absorb calcium. Believe it or not, the American diet, the, you know, assuming people eat kind of the average American diet, you actually get about a good amount of calcium in the diet. Now, again, that might be different if you're eating differently, you know, uh, maybe vegan diet. Uh, vegan diet could be extremely healthy, but if they're eating differently, they may or may not get the calcium levels that they need. But usually the average American actually gets pretty decent calcium levels. So what really hinges on the absorption of that? Well, of course, it's vitamin D. So either we've got to get it from the UV penetration of the skin, okay? So I can put skin here so we know that we are talking about skin. Put sun on the skin. And then uh, we got to get it that way or we have to get it uh, basically dietarily, and there are foods that have vitamin D in it, um, or we have to take a supplement. Um, many people are low in vitamin D because they're obviously not getting the sun uh, like, like people used to in years past, or they're not getting it dietarily. It's a little harder to get vitamin D than it is calcium. And obviously we need both. So better to take it in supplement form then. So that's basically our function for calcitriol. So in the end, what does calcitriol do for calcium levels? Well, in the end, it is going to raise calcium levels. Think about it. As we take in vitamin D, it's going to let us absorb that calcium so it has a calcium raising effect. Now we come up to these two here. Now these two are a little bit different. These two are antagonists, which means one is going to do one thing, the other is going to do the exact opposite. So let's actually talk about PTH first. What does PTH do? It is going to be secreted during hypo Calcemia. So what is hypocalcemia? This is uh, going to be low levels of calcium. So when we have low levels of calcium, PTH is going to be secreted. What does PTH do? It stimulates osteoclasts. I haven't mentioned osteoclasts before in any videos, but what osteoclasts are, are macrophages. They are a type of macrophage that basically eats bone. Okay, so their job is to basically reabsorb or resorb bone. So what literally the osteoclasts are gonna do is they're going to break down bone, that's in a nutshell what they do. They're gonna break down bone in order to harvest some calcium. So literally PTH is going to stimulate the breaking down of bone to ultimately do what? Raise oops, calcium levels. So we see with PTH a raising of calcium levels. Okay, again, by essentially breaking down bone. So it would make sense, hypocalcemia, when you're low in calcium, we would expect to see under, under normal circumstances the body's working properly, elevated PTH levels because the body's gonna be trying to raise the calcium level back to hopefully normal, to keep it again in homeostasis. Okay, hypocalcemia is gonna be the more common scenario, the more common imbalance, low calcium levels. How many people have low calcium levels? Lots of people have low calcium levels, typically related to low vitamin D levels. Okay. But of course, it can be related to other things too. Now, calcitonin is going to be the exact opposite. It's our antagonistic hormone. So this is going to be secreted during hypercalcemia. So obviously, this is going to be during elevated levels of calcium. It's going to be secreted. It is going to stimulate... osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are cells that build bone. They basically become osteocytes, which are bone cells. So we think about it this way. Osteoblasts basically make bone. Osteoclasts get rid of it, break it down. Okay, so osteoblasts are going to build bone. So what the calcitonin is going to do is it's going to trigger these osteoblasts 
to basically take some of that excess calcium and build bone with it. Hence, lowering the calcium levels. So that is our function for calcitonin. It is going to lower calcium levels. So obviously, the body is working all the time to, to regulate calcium balance or homeostasis. So I hope that helps. Look for more videos soon. We're going to do some on bone cell lines and understanding how osteoblasts and osteoclasts work. We're going to do that real soon. So stay tuned. Good luck and good study.